might have seen some of his evidence uh, as an exhibit, but now we have the man himself as an exhibit. <laughs> so over to you to tell us what extreme botany really is. Okay, I'll do my best. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have stepped in at short notice, and the title of my talk actually is not as on the sheet. It's actually called a botani An Extreme Botanical Love Story. But actually, I think there are various alternative titles which have come to mind in the last few minutes. For example, Fools Rush In Where uh, Extreme Botanists Fear to Tread, or something like that, because I have deleted my talk. Um, so what I have to do um, is uh, reconstruct it in front of you. Um, there should be a website in here somewhere. There we are. I think it's here. Um, OK. So, uh, a botanical love story, um, extreme botany, what's it all about, really? Well, this is all about outreach. And I'm very grateful to Louise, actually, for inviting me here. Um, and I hope I'll be able to communicate some ideas to you. It's, it's not actually rocket science, so I think I'll be able to do that without um, the lovely PowerPoint. It's all about outreach, and it really, it's kind of all about me, but it's all about the best B word that we have, which is botany, of course. And what I should be showing now is a little clip which shows me going up to someone and saying, do you like plants? And they turn around and say, no, not really. And I say, oh. Um, and that's it. Um, so this is really about developing that, oh, um, how can we maybe reach out to people who don't like plants? But the first step, I think, is to reach out to people who do like plants and who perhaps are uh, for some one reason or another not in the fold. I think botany can be a bit of a hard sell. We know that we've, we've lost a lot of botany degrees. I'm from the University of Reading, I should say, the School of Biological Sciences. Um, I teach on two MSCs, one called Plant Diversity, the other MSC is called Species Identification and Survey Skills. Plant Diversity is all about plants, of course. Um, species Identification is all about plants and animals, or animals and plants. However, undergraduate botany degrees are uh, as pen's teeth, um, and I don't think that's just uh, in the UK. So it's easy to build up a kind of pessimistic view. There was a, uh, an article in the British Ecological Society Bulletin <coughs> not so long ago entitled Botany is Dead, it was in their rant column, uh, and there was a response saying actually no, botany is not really dead, plant science is what it's all about. Well, I kind of agreed and disagreed with both sides of that argument. But I certainly know from my experience that there are plenty of students who get interested in plants. Uh, obviously, if you sign up to an MSc in plant diversity, it's pretty much taken as read you'll have an interest in plants. If you sign up for an MSc in species identification survey skills, which is about animals and plants, maybe you need a bit more persuasion. And I've found um, since we've been running the second MSc in particular, the Species ID one, which is animals and plants, that it's not difficult to get people who are primarily interested in animals uh, interested in plants. And I think that's, that's true of uh, younger generations uh, as well. So what, what I think is, there are gloom and doom stories, but I think there are, and we've seen this, this isn't, this isn't new what I'm saying, we've seen that there are um, uh, initiatives which are reaching out to others, and it's a question of how do we do this. And I've kind of invented the idea of extreme botany, but it's just bringing together some of these, these ideas about and reaching out about plants, making people realise how exciting fun plants can be. Before I, I'm at Reading, I, I moved to Reading in 2007, and before I was at Reading, I, I was actually quite a young botanist. I remember at school back in Canterbury, being very interested in plants, went to Bangor University, studied botany, and then had various botanical uh, jobs, but then e ecological jobs. I taught, taught ecology at a place called Y College for a long time, it was then taken over by Imperial College, and then it was closed, and thereby is a, a long um, and rather unkind story. Um, and I remember at the time when I was made redundant at Y College that they were saying, well, you're going to go through various things. It's a bit like having a terminal illness, um, and you'll be very angry, and then you're going to be very confused, and then you'll be this, that, and the other, and then it's all going to be lovely in the end. And I thought, don't be so stupid. However, it has turned out to be lovely because the job I have at Reading, which is actually combining uh, teaching botany, so I'm actually doing what I started off to do 
in, in Bangor, I'm doing it now full time, well half time, because the other half of my job is a, as a botanical consultant with a company called RSK Group. And I'm based there in an office in Hemel Hempstead, and that's fine. And so actually, it's a bit of a rainbow in the sense of, of what I'm able to do. And I've just been so infused by students and that I have taught, and there are some here. Incidentally, that nice exercise for matching the seeds and fruits with the, the flowers was um, uh, brainchild of Christine, one of my current MSc students, and um, Wahid has helped with that as well. So I'm just been constantly over the years impressed by the imagination and, and, and interest and enthusiasm of students, and I think it's a kind of tip of a little iceberg, uh, really. And maybe at this stage, I'll uh, it actually shows you the value of a blog, because this says what I'm going to say. Um, oh, oh. No idea. You can't see what I've got here, um, which is interesting. Sure. Um, well, at least I can read it. Um, <laughs> and so, so really what happened is 2007 I went to Reading, I was teaching plant diversity MSC, then we, we invented the species ID MSC just three years ago. I got a huge satisfaction from that, um, and this, my students helped me develop these modules where I teach plant identification, field botany, um, and vegetation survey. And of course I can teach that as a, uh, from a consultancy point of view as well as from a botanist point of view. Um, and, however, that wasn't really enough. I felt, um, you know, Okay, maybe I've taught about 100 or more students since I've been at Reading. Uh, what more can I do? And one of the nice things at Reading, and it's certainly very much what Louise was talking about, is that we're, we're very much into this kind of use of social media, use of uh, e-learning, uh, effective teaching uh, of science using, using technology. And I've got a colleague called Alistair Callum and others who are very into that. Um, and that really stimulated me to think about, well, maybe I could reach um, a, a wider audience uh, using technology. Um, and what happened, oh, you can't see this. Um, yeah, this year what happened was back in March, I went on a walk with some friends um, to look for some grasses. Okay, we wanted to identify grasses at the beginning of the season, and we wanted to remind ourselves what grasses looked like. We remembered they had two leaves in two ranks, of course, we did that. But um, we wanted to remind ourselves before the, the botanical season started what, what, what grasses were. Uh, like. So we went to this place called Sindelton Cops, which is in Oxfordshire, but there was snow everywhere. So we couldn't really find grasses very easily, and it was very, very freezing, freezing cold. For some reason, I made a video, and I started talking about extreme botany, which is actually digging around in the snow, trying to get these grasses out, uh, and trying to uh, identify them. Okay, that's fine. You can see it, and I can't. All the rushing. I can't show you see that uh, at all. <laughs> really challenging. Uh, it's fun. Um, I think we'll just finish this and see if we have questions. Um, so, so I invented the concept of extreme botany. Okay, and unfortunately this extreme botanist is not gifted enough to be able to, to do anything with that, except, perhaps... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. Um, if I had a small sapling, I would whip it. Um, so the, the concept of extreme botany came to life through this rather weird video, and I do encourage you to look at my website if you haven't already. Go into the video thing, and if you are doing it on your computer, you'll be able to do it because it will be working properly, unlike here. Um, and it's, uh, it's called Extreme Poesy, that video. Um, and it wasn't really much about botany. Aranathra Malatis does feature in that video. Um, but it was just kind of odd. Uh, and, and the idea of extreme botany is, fortunately, written on the back of this leaflet, <laughs> which um, is, well, I was, I, it was a friend of mine who said, that's fine, you can make funny videos, because I actually do like making funny videos. I suppose if I had my way, I'd make a lot more funny videos. But I love plants uh, as well, um, uh, equally as much. And, and she was saying, well, what, is, what do you mean by extreme botany? She forced me to write down what I meant by extreme botany. So what I mean, uh, and, and this is really about a uh, sort of concept for, for engaging with students and engaging with people that perhaps not 
like plants but haven't really got into to learning about plants. So spoon botany shows firstly how exciting plants are. You don't have to have tanks and, and <laughs> stupid cars and polystyrene bubbles uh, to show that plants, and even David Attenborough found it, he did that program on plants and you had to spend a million pounds building a woodland. Do you remember that one? The brat brambles going all over the place, and then a Venus tried to fly that using a fly 18 times because it moves, and therefore it must be more interesting than plants that don't move. But plants are exciting. Maybe I'll just take a hand there and look at them to realise that. And field botany is fun. No one goes on any field trip and we see something without laughing at least 800 times. So that's actually good for health as well. Extreme botany gives people the tools they need to become actually very knowledgeable about plants. You have to introduce people to the hand legs, as you use it. You use it like that, you use it like this. And you use things like the vegetative key, which is out there, which any of you have read my reviews of it, now I rave about it. It's been transformed my teaching. Uh, the Book of Stace introduced students to that. It's a bit scary, it's a bit big, drop it on your foot, it hurts. But work out, use it with some plants you know, and actually, if, you're, if you find a new plant, you could um, get somewhere through, through stays, uh, even if you're not an absolute expert botanist. It's about taking your identification skills to the next level, wherever you're starting from. It's about uh, identifying plants under very challenging conditions. So that might be a mown bit of grass, and it might be um, grasses under the snow, and uh, that's where it came from. And it's challenging but that's actually where the interest is these are the extremities the funny little brassy casing that's out there on the table i don't know what it is but that's the botanical extremities working out being able to identify or get somewhere close it includes the use of video i'd be able to show you loads of funny videos if i could get this thing to work but it's my own fault for deleting my presentation so i, I really like the idea of using video maybe a good thing to do is actually get students to make videos and then see which are the best ones, what works. I had planned a series of 100 videos. If you've looked at my website, how many will you see there? You'll see one. I can't work out how to do it to make it best. So uh, others have advised me, get students to make videos um, and, and see what works and what doesn't. Finally, you can give other teachers the skills they need to teach plants. I think it's particularly important that schools, I think one of the reasons we don't have um, Perhaps as many people interested in plants as we like as they don't do plants very well at school. It'd be lovely to meet some teachers who do do plants well at school uh, and, and learn from them. But on the whole, they don't do it very well. And then, after extreme botany, it's more or less the, um, at the same time, came Dr. M Goes Wild. And that's the website. Okay, and that contains the blog and that contains the videos. And that really kicked off in April this year. Um, and again, it was this friend of mine who said, well, you can be reaching out beyond the students that you're, you're working at um, face to face through the website and I knew nothing about the website so as you can see not very good at technology and um, anyway we developed this website it looks better than that because that's kind of decapitated there and actually that cartoon of me that's Dr. M the web persona was drawn by a, a student of mine a chap called Rory Carr um, who was on the species identification MSc last year. I just asked the class, some of the class, is anyone who can do cartoons? They just asked Rory. And he produced that, which is way more than a cartoon. It's actually really good. So Dr. N Goes Wild is the website, which has got, and the idea there is, is to, to prepare, uh, present resources and, and, and things which will show proper botany, but also with some fun and, and with something, hopefully, that people would like to read. And the numbers, I've had about 10,000 views that in the few months since you've been going, you had to divide it by the time that people come to accidentally find it. But and nonetheless, it, it, the, the views are going up, and I think that's useful. I'd be very pleased for you to look at it and send me critical comments. I try to post regularly, because content, content, content is what all this is about. So there are po blog posts, there are videos in there, uh, and also I hope to develop things. I'd like to prepare a guide to the veg key, but video guide to the veg key, a video guide to the book of stays, student videos, uh, things like that. So it's really about, it's almost like a research exercise, I mean, asking the question, can we use modern technologies uh, like websites, blogging, to further the cause of, of, of teaching, communicating about policy. So it's almost a work in progress. Um, and I know it's not new. Uh, so I've said, I think on the famous deleted PowerPoint, I say, uh, um, 
Steve Botany by any other name. I know that these things are going on elsewhere, but this is just my way of, 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 of moving with that. I know there is no substitute for being out in the field, and I do run some of my own courses. I have signed up to be a, uh, a tutor in the online botany business. I'm very, very keen on the field side, being in the field. Is, that perhaps was why I was slightly reluctant to go with this, this web business, because my love is people <coughs> communicating to students. And you can see an example on the website of that. We had a bio blitz at Reading um, in June, and I ran a little intro to grasses, and there's a, there's a video, uh, probably the best video actually, on the um, double the decent camera. Most of my early videos are CRED because they are um, done with a really cheap camera, but I got a better camera. And that grass one shows some activity in the field. Poesy is one of my favorites. You'll see on the website that I actually do sing the Poesy song. Um, which is after the chemical element song, if you know that. Um, Poesia is a family of grasses, green and wonderful. The leaves are ranked in twos, not threes, for that is cyclorace. The columns have nodes, the flowers reduced to spike, it's strange and magical. Yes, Poesia is a family of grasses, green and wonderful, it goes on. Is there a reason for it? I love it. So that's in there as well. Um, but mostly it's about trying to communicate uh, pro proper botany. The um, Presentation deleted, uh, the X presentation, um, it's like a parrot, um, yes, seems to be, but uh, it starts with the man saying, no, not really interested in botany, it ends with several clips from recent things I've done where people are shouting extreme botany, yeah, 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 because I told them to, but, um, you know, I think that's really what it's about, so I'm just interested really in, in, in your responses. Have a look at the website if you haven't already, and please do send me Communication. One of the problems I have with this website is no one comments. It's kind of just a one-way thing, and I do want feedback. So today I was uh, talking about uh, Twitter, which I can't think of doing, but maybe I'll have to do that, because I think that's a way of getting, getting more and more interaction. But uh, please do have a look. Deep apologies for deleting my presentation. Um, I don't know whether I've kept your time. If I have, that was because I deleted my presentation. <laughs> narrow definitions of what the field is and I think that's a problem because I think we think of the field as being outdoors in the countryside um, and there's actually a lot of other places that are the field which can be someone's kitchen, someone's garden, um, Q does a lot of work with border authority and their field is looking through people's luggage at sort of cryptic samples of plants. Um, if you took someone who's a chef who uses ras al hunud, which is a, a mixture of spices, but you can go through it with them. There's over 20 different kinds of seeds in one little packet. And I, I think these are ways where we can say, well, we think of the field as outdoors in the countryside, but for most of the country, the field is the stuff they're seeing on markets, in the supermarkets, what's on their table and their garden, um, you know, speed urban plantings and I think maybe we can expand our concept of field and meet people halfway. Very very quickly, yes, totally agree. That's someone else's work because what this is I mean for me this is about what moves me. Um, and some of those things do, the garden plants and so on, absolutely. But I think it's it would be great to see um, those, those resources, but it's got to be someone else. I, I mean, I do invite guest blogs here, and I'm, I'm keen to do that, and that can widen things a bit. But as far as talking about me, me, me at the moment, that um, you know, that reflects, I think, what, what, what moves me, and, and that may be an issue uh, of positive or negative notes. But in general terms, I totally agree, yeah. Botany is a big key word. Sounds like you've just had an invitation to do a guest blog. <laughs> <laughs> Right, our next speaker is Don Cradle, who's um, director of the Anthropology Centre here at the Museum. And he's going to talk about the public engagement of 